All right, guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Kyle Woodford, and I'm a film photographer based out of Cincinnati, Ohio. I had recently gotten my hands on a pack of the new Kodak Gold in medium format, and I really wanted to test it out and kind of give you guys my thoughts and kind of a review, maybe first impressions of the film stock. And yesterday it was 65 and sunny out, so I thought this was a good day to try it out. I decided to drive to Pleasant Ridge, which is about 15, 20 minutes northeast of Cincinnati. And I went out with my Bronica SQAI and the Sony a7 III, which I'm filming on right now, and kind of create a short little video. Um, and I think it's a good way to kind of show why I decided to go with some of these compositions and kind of my opinions and what went through my head before taking each shot and stuff. So enjoy. All right. We are in Pleasant Ridge, uh, like 20 minutes like northeast of uh, Cincinnati, little suburb. Um, it's actually about like 70 degrees out today and sunny. And uh, I'm actually thinking I'm gonna take some photos of houses, cars, um, just kind of like suburban neighborhoods today. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Might be asking some random people if I can uh, take photos of their house today. Might get yelled at, so we'll see. So now I'm going to kind of go into the details of how I went through choosing and taking photos. One in particular, the first one, this house, I really liked how it was framed by the trees on the sides and then the street in the middle. Really pulls you into focus of just the house as the subject, so that's why I chose that. The next photo is actually going to be of this street sign, and I really liked the contrasting between the colors of the blue sky, the kind of white pear tree, and then the bright green sign. Unfortunately, I kind of underexposed this sign just because it was like it was a backlit situation. I kind of metered more for the sky and less less so for the sign, but I, I still think it turned out pretty good. A big thing about these photos is. The way I compose them, a lot of it's due to patterns, it's due to leading lines, rule of thirds, frame within a frame, layers. A lot of these photos I like to choose, you know, foreground, midground, and background layers kind of to create this complex framing that leads you into the subject in the midground. Um, this station wagon, I actually did go up to the house and ask the owner if I could take a photo of the station wagon. I don't always do this, but I figured on a nice day, a lot of people are at home, like out and about and at home. So it's a lot easier than say like, you know, a weekday night and stuff like that. So I was able to just kind of see that they were home and I just decided I would ask them instead of making it weird and, you know, having like having them come to the front of the house, see me taking a photo and it would just be, it would just be weird. So this was just easier, but I really liked this station wagon on the side of the house. It was in a super kind of high contrast situation with the back of it being shadowed and the front of it being super blown out and highlighted from the sun glaring off of it. But I really liked it against the uh, side paneling on the house. So I ended up taking about two or three photos of it. I took, I believe, one from the back, one from the side, and one from the front. The first one I ended up taking was one from the side. And I really liked it composed against the side paneling. I think it, it's a great pattern in the back. And with the car in the front, it really makes the car kind of pop out of the pop out of the photo. The next one was one from the back. And this one I just liked because it kind of shows like more of the details of the back of the car. And then the final one I took was one in the front. I ended up metering at one five hundredth of a second, uh, which was straight down the middle. Highlights were at a thousandth, shadows were at two fiftieth. So I just metered at one fifty or one five hundredth just to be able to be safe for both. And this ended up being one of my favorite photos that I took. I really like the soft glow on the front of the car, and I think it just really looks good in the sunlight. And obviously, it's super warm because of the Kodak Gold. This next shot is another instance of like a frame within a frame, kind of similar to the house shot I took at the beginning. It has the branches and kind of the trees surrounding the church. And then you have the big cross in the middle, um, which is kind of like all directing you towards that middle cross, which I thought was a super cool image. 
Also another backlit situation. This next composition was a little more simple. It is just the house, um, but I really liked the colors of the house contrasting against the greens on the grass and the blues from the sky. It does, it is kind of an interesting looking house with the round windows in the front. And I really liked the trees on the sides also just framing the whole house. I thought it looked good. This next shot of the blue Toyota is another good uh, instance where I took layers into account. You'll see these stone rocks on the side in the forefront of the image, then you'll see the blue truck in the middle in the midground, and then you'll see the white house in the background along with the sky and trees and stuff. So it's kind of a good way to show the complexities of this image and lead you into the Toyota. The Toyota is nicely framed in the middle while everything kind of leads towards it, which I really liked. And then this is another instance of layering with the two roads kind of converging right where the stop sign is. It's another good way to show uh, like leading lines and uh, another way to show layers and, and photography and stuff. Everything kind of leads to the stop sign, which I thought was really cool. Not, my, not anything crazy, but definitely an interesting photo. This next photo I took of this street. I liked how the street kind of curves. There's like a curve and then it goes straight again. So I thought this was a kind of a cool way to create leading lines down the street and pull people to like the bottom of the street. Unfortunately, the sun wasn't as out during this photo, so it is a little more overcast, which you can see in the photo. It's not nearly as like warm and sunny. It kind of looks more like it kind of looks more like dark and desolate for sure, but the Kodak Gold still rendered it pretty warm. This next shot is of the Lexus on the street, another case where the sunlight was glowing perfectly on the back of the car and I also used the street and kind of the elements of the grass in the front and the grass in the back to create layers also with the stop sign I kind of frame it and then finally this is my favorite shot I took it's probably the most complex photo it has the station wagon in the middle but there's also the basketball hoop there's a the grass on the right there's a the grass in the foreground and then there's the houses in the background it is probably the most, you know, layered photo I took, and that's kind of why it's my favorite photo. I really like the uh, complexity of the greens and browns, and then you just see that nice silver blue car in the middle. It really makes it pop. I immediately went home and ended up developing these. Uh, I do develop everything at home with the Cinestill C41 kits and, like, the Patterson tank, and I believe I developed just that and another roll of 35 millimeter. And I usually develop everything as soon as I get done with them, um, just because I don't like sitting on them and like piling up film. So I usually try and develop everything as soon as possible. I then ended up uh, going and converting them with Negative Lab Pro and using my Epson V600 to scan them. Uh, I've used it for over a year, year and a half now. And honestly, I really do like it for medium format. It does a great job. I don't use it for 35 millimeter anymore. I use the uh, optic film plus 7200 or something like that uh, it's a little more it's a smaller more independent 35 millimeter scanner um, that I use but for medium format I still use the Epson and honestly while I was scanning these I was really happy with the results the only photo that I really struggled metering with was the photo of the street sign but all in all, I was really happy with how these scans turned out. I didn't really touch them up at all. I kind of added a little more sharpness and contrast to them, just a hair. But all in all, I was pretty happy with how the scans turned out. Okay, so now I'm going to go over kind of my first impressions of this film stock. I do really like it, and I definitely am going to continue shooting it. It is going to be cheaper and less expensive than Portrait 400 and Portrait 800. In Cincinnati, Portrait 400 for a pack is about 65, and Portrait 800 is about 70 or 75. And then I got the Kodak Gold Pack for a little over 50, maybe 55. So, you, you know, just for the price, it is a great option for people who want to continue shooting film but you know, obviously don't want to spend as much money because film is just becoming so expensive nowadays. I even had to take a break from shooting medium format for a while just because of how expensive it was getting. Film is definitely something that, you know, I don't make that much money off of for sure. It's, it's definitely more of my hobby and my passion and it, you know, it helps me stay creative. But, you know, when it comes to paid work, I'm not shooting film just due to the price and the process. And, you know, it, it's just a lot more work and stuff. So I think 
Kodak Gold is great for people who are kind of in that same boat where you want to have, you know, obviously really great quality photos and you just, you know, it's more affordable, which is awesome. It's great Kodak has been able to do that. We, I think everyone's been waiting for more like consumer friendly film stock to come out into the market. And, you know, with the prices of film getting so expensive, there's so many people getting into it. It, the supply and demand, like prices are just gonna keep getting more expensive for film, cameras, etc. So it was awesome that Kodak was able to release like a Kodak Gold consumer level medium format film, which is, you know, incredible. This is also um, my very first YouTube video I've done in a while, especially for film photography. And it's something I wanna continue doing. Um, I haven't really made a YouTube video in probably a year. I think my last one was the Mamiya 645 Pro review. Um, but before that, I used to only do YouTube videos and videos and short films. Um, but I transitioned more into photography and kind of put videography on the back burner. So I decided to start making these again just because I think it's a great way to combine both of my hobbies into you know one platform and be able to speak and kind of share my thoughts and opinions on both. Um, so I'm definitely going to continue making these videos and I'm going to keep them more so on like kind of like an educational, informative level um, because I think when I first started I didn't really know exactly what I was getting into, kind of the ups and downs of film. I really do enjoy helping people kind of answer some of these questions and get more people involved into the film industry because I, I truly think film photography is a great way to get people to take more photos in general. Um, just because you have a camera on you, you want to be able to capture a memory and there's something about it compared to taking an iPhone photo that really motivates people to be able to capture more moments and stuff. It's more nostalgic, you know, obviously the aesthetic is completely different and I think people are much more willing to take photos of just anything and everything. So I think it's a great option for people trying to get into photography. And it always makes me happy being able to see people learn through it and kind of put their own creative spin through photography and film photography especially. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm definitely gonna obviously keep making more. I'm not exactly sure how many or how often I'm gonna make them but I'm gonna try and make them as much as I can so no promises but um, I'm definitely gonna be doing some you know camera reviews film stock reviews portrait sessions photo walks you know all of the above so yeah if you like this video you know you can go ahead and subscribe and I'll keep you guys updated with more of my videos and kind of what I plan on releasing also I have an Instagram and you can go ahead and follow me on Instagram at kylew.tiff and I obviously post all my photos on there and stuff, and I'll post when I release videos and stuff like that. But I really hope you enjoyed this video and kind of my review of this first, you know, impressions of Kodak Gold and kind of my thoughts and stuff, and also the photo walk. So if you enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, give it a like, you know, share it, blah, 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 whatever you want to do. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a great day, and I hope to keep making more videos for you guys here in the future.